Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is basically part one of my file class tutorial. I'm going to open up my web browser on my website, javacjava.com, so I begin. And I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the file class part one. And so basically the file class has been around since the very beginning of Java and is part of the java.io package. Now the file class contains methods and constructors for various file and direct directory manipulating features. Now Java is platform independent. Your Java programs can execute on any operating system that the JVM can run on. Now that doesn't mean that the JVM is independent of the rules of the file system that the JVM is running on. As a matter of fact, the JVM and your programs must be written in such a way that they can dynamically adapt to the OS that they are being run on. Consider this Windows hard-coded path represented as a string, right? Um, so basically be on the C drive and then underneath the Java folder, right? And you have to do these escape sequences for the backslashes, right? And then another subfolder BW that was for my buffer writer, and then a file called sample.txt. Now, if a user attempted to run your program on a Linux or Unix OS, your program will fail miserably. Now, that is because the directory separator is basically uh, forward slash in Unix as opposed to backslash in Windows. Now, the file class provides us with several tools to dynamically create our directory and file structure. On a side note, in Java 7, a new class named files, plural, right, was introduced to provide even greater flexibility and functionality for supporting dynamic directory and file capabilities. Now I'll be creating a tutorial on that class in the future. Now don't be tempted to skip over learning the file class as it is necessary to understand some core concepts before tackling the files class. Okay, so basically we have four different types of cons four constructors here in the file class. Right, one takes a file object, parent, and a string child. And this is just basically going to be like a directory, right? And this will be the name of the file. There's a whole entire string path name, which we could hard code in something like that, which would not be good as if because it would fail on, on a Unix OS and other operating systems too as well. So, so basically I'm gonna go over um, these three constructors right here. Uh, file URI is basically you can pull from like a URL if you wanted to, you know, like a HTTP or something like that. And this is URI, but I'll, I'll get into that on the, in like maybe part three or part four of the file tutorials there. So we'll do some cool stuff with that. Um, let's go ahead and come down here and highlight the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Uh, let's move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking New Shortcut. CMD Next and Finish. All right, let's open that up. First thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You want to make sure you get that all this stuff scrolls by. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the uh, Java development kit. Make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory with the MD command called Java. I already have that folder, but if uh, you don't, I'm going to go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm just going to call this uh, file part one. And let's change directories to the file part one folder. I'm going to notepad file part one.java to name my source code file, and control V to paste, or you can right click and select paste. Okay, so this is all just a single class here. Um, I'm importing the Java IO package, and here's the main method entry point. So there's four static fields or properties to the file class, and we'll just go ahead and display those to the console here first. So we'll display this string literal here, and then the first thing we're going to do is um, display path separator. Now, path separator, and I've got the, the documentation for the file class already open over here in file there, right? Here's the field summary. So path separator, uh, system dependent path separator character represented as a string for convenience, represented as a char, a character for convenience basically here. But the path separator, you might be going, what's a path separator? All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and come back to that here in just a second. 
Okay, so pass separator is a string, pass separator is a char. And then we've got just an ordinary separator, file separator, returns a string, and separator char returns a char. And before we get into this, let's go ahead and run it, and then I'll explain what we're looking at there. Let's save, clear our screen, let's see, let's compile this, and let's run it. And it's going to come up with a whole bunch of stuff. We want to scroll up to the top. We'll just end up moving this down here. Okay. So pass separator you can see is a semicolon, right? And pass separator char obviously is a semicolon. And separator is a backslash. And separator char is a backslash. And of course, up here, like when you see C colon backslash Java backslash file part one, right? These are separating the the directory structure, right? Java is a directory. File part one is a directory, right? Okay. So that's fairly simple on the separator. So you might be going, well, what's the path separator? The path separator applies to um, a lot of like, let's say for example, a good example here is when you were configuring the Java development kit, right? You'd open up your system properties, go to advanced system settings, and in the environmental variables here, right, we have um, this one called path. And if we take a look at path, right, all of our path, right? So in other words, like this is where the Java development kit is installed on my machine. You'll see right before that, here's a semicolon, and that's exactly what a path separator is in here, right? Um, this big giant string represents the environmental variable path, and all the individual little paths inside of that are separated by semicolons. Not used very often, but I just figured I'd let you guys know what that was. Okay, so. Uh, separator, for example, if you're running, invoking the separator field, getting that, not invoking it, it's not a method, but uh, getting that value separator there. Um, in a Linux or Unix environment, we return a forward slash, right? Okay. So this is critical to, to what I'm talking about by dynamically doing our path as opposed to statically doing it. All right. So the next thing we've got down here is we're going to test some of the constructors. So the first constructor that I'm going to test um, basically is, let me move my, takes this one right here, string path name, okay? So by putting in just basically the, the file, the separator, right, which is just an ordinary backslash, that is going to return a file object that we can then invoke like get absolute path, okay? Now when we invoke get absolute path on that, it's going to say C colon backslash. So plain old backslash, when you do just a new file with file separator here, and you get the absolute backslash, is actually very root of the C drive there, okay? And then we can invoke other stuff on this here, right? Let's move that up. Is it a directory? Yes. Is it a file? No, that's false, right? True and false there on that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is um, the, the miter here, right? I'm just going to take the same reference variable and point it to a new object now. And that new object will be file separator, which of course we know is backslash, and then Java, the, the string literal Java, because that's the folder name that we want to get, and then file separator, right? And backslash, and then file part one, which is exactly, you know, where we are right, right up here, right? So this is the current folder that we're working on like that. All right, let's go ahead and scroll down to that little portion of code there. And so you can see when we get the absolute path um, right here, it's C colon backslash Java backslash file part one. So that's our total absolute path there. Is it a directory? True. Is it a file? False. No. All right, now we want to do, want to do something with that. Now we've got our directory where we want to work out of, our working directory in other words. Um, so we want to create an, a new file called temp.txt. So we're going to use another uh, one of the constructors here. And that is this particular constructor right here. File parent string child. Okay, because we have a file object that we're going to be passing in, um, which contains basically my dir, right? You know, it contains that whole entire absolute URL of that. And then basically we'll create a file called temp.txt off of there. Okay. Um, Conversely, we could have used uh, also the other constructor, for example, string parent, right, and string and string child by simply, you know, doing something like, uh, you know, string blah equals and then all this.
this stuff right here, right? And you know, then we could have put in in uh, you know basically the reference variable blah right there on that. So that's how we could use the other constructor. The two are so similar. I just chose to do it this way because it's kind of like you can see how this evolves as as we're doing this. Okay. Now when we invoke the I'm gonna scroll up on this just a little bit here so we've got room for this on the screen. When we invoke the get absolute path on the new on my file here, right, a brand new uh, file object. C colon backslash Java backslash file part one backslash temp dot text. Okay. Uh, is it a directory? False. Is it a file? That comes back false. You know, you're going, what? No, that's a file. Temp dot text. Yeah, we know that's a file. Well, the reason why it isn't a file yet is because it doesn't exist. So we also have this method we can invoke called exists. Okay. So until it exists, it isn't, uh, is file will always return false. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to invoke the create new file method here, which is part of the file class. And what that'll do is that'll create, and maybe I'll just bring over the documentation, show you, show you on that. There's a whole bunch of methods in here. But create new file um, just basically creates an empty file with the file name there, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I am just, uh, Doing that right there, right, where am I? Where did I go? Okay, so yeah, we're creating a new file. And then after the after we create the new file, it exists true, and then is it a file? True, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invoke the delete method there, right? Which will delete that file, and then check to see if it exists again, right? And exists equals false. All right, so, um, if you've been watching my tutorial series this far, you know you don't really, the file class doesn't, it's not really good for for create, for like reading and writing files and everything like that. The buffered writer and buffered reader classes are by far superior to anything you would use to trying to stumble through the old, well, I shouldn't say the old, but well, it is an old file class. It's been around since there. And, you know, there's newer, newer stuff, newer, better stuff out there, okay? But let's go over to the file, you know, um, yeah, as you've seen, like for example, the buffered writer tutorial, right? I was wrapping file writer inside of a, a buffered writer and passing in a hard-coded string value, okay? Now, um, we don't really want to do the hard-coded string values because I'm teaching you guys how to dynamically do stuff. Let's come back over to the file writer class. Now, the file writer class has these constructors here. And I demonstrated the one with string file name and string file name and append, right? And now we've got these other ones. And now that you kind of understand what a file object is, we can pass in a file object to either one of these two constructors here. I'm just going to demonstrate this first one here. And the second one's really simple. Just pass it a, a Boolean true or false, whether you want to append. False wouldn't even make any sense because that would do essentially the same thing as this one right here, which would overwrite it every time you created it, right? And so, but uh, anywho, let's go ahead and move that off. And now you can kind of understand what that is. So I'm going to use the buffered writer and I'm gonna wrap file writer inside of there and basically pass in my file, which is this temp.txt. And we'll go ahead and write this string literal, invoke the new line, write this string literal, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a buffer reader, right? And the same thing with buffer reader, file reader um, also has those same things. Well, it had, you can pass it a file um, for one of the, the arguments there too as well. And then we'll just go ahead and display the contents of, and then I'll, my file get absolute path, and we'll loop it, loop around until it's done, okay? So that displays this right here, the contents of C colon backslash file part one temp.txt. Creating a file dyna object dynamically is the way to go. It really isn't that hard to do, okay? So we created the file and then we read it. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do, as a matter of fact, if we do a directory here, right, you can see there's our temp.txt. You can notepad up uh, temp.txt. And we can see, you know, Exactly how we can do that there. All right, um, let's go ahead and come down here to this last little section here. So we'll just put it all together and I'll demonstrate um, the, the string portion of it there. So I got string entire name, so doing my file separator, right? 
Um, Java file separator, which is backslash file part one, backslash sample.txt, okay? So this is all dynamic because we're pulling file separator, that particular field value there. So in a Unix-based system, this would be forward slash Java, forward slash file part one, forward slash sample text. Okay, so I'm gonna use the same buffered, um, buffered writer and I'm gonna new, do new file writer and then new file entire name here, right? Passing in for the, the constructor on the file there, wrapping that in there, um, entire name being the string portion of it there for everything, which then uh, basically uh, is of course this particular constructor usage right there, okay? All right, um, then I'm going to write this string literal new line, write this string literal, and so on and so forth there. So, the file that I created here called sample.txt, so let's go ahead and notepad up sample.txt, and we get another nice thing about dynamically building your path is that you don't have to hard code, you know, your, back, your escape sequence, which is the backslash, and then of course your backslash character and a huge string literal. All right, I'm um, gonna go ahead and close out of that, and so basically, hopefully you got a good idea of what a file object is now and how you can dynamically create your directory path to, um, to whatever file you want to either read or write or do whatever you want to do with, right? If you want to delete it or you know, so on and so forth there. So um, in my next tutorial, I'll be building on this, show you guys how to create directories, dir delete directories, copy files, and copy files are, it's interesting, but there is better ways to do that. And once again, we have to save that for a more advanced topic there, but I'll, I'll demonstrate it with the file class. But anyway, um, some good stuff coming up in part two. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that off screen and get that off screen, and that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.